Remember the year 1990? It was a great time for many across the country, including me, who at 12 years old had peaked athletically. The 49ers were lifting the Lombardi Trophy after capturing their fourth championship in 10 years. The Holiday Classic Home Alone was taking the nation's box office by storm. I can't seem to find my toothbrush, so I'll pick one up when I go out today. Other than that, I'm in good shape. And the musical stylings of Vanilla Ice were burning up dance floors across the country. But one place that wasn't thriving was New York City. Gotham had turned into a hellacious nest of criminal activity, the city racking up an average of six murders a day. The Big Apple was a killing field. The crack epidemic, like my aforementioned athletic accomplishments, had hit its peak. Geraldo Rivera covered the carnage across the country in great detail. Armed with crowbars, sledgehammers, shotguns, and automatic weapons in cities and suburbs on the West Coast, East Coast, down South, and in the heartland, their job is to rip and tear and pulverize their way into the nation's shooting galleries and crack houses. And even the littlest children are caught in the middle. The crack is in the diaper. Yes. And they're not using the baby for cover. I mean, this is pathetic. Crack in the diaper. After years of death and decline, the people in New York had had enough. Things were so bad, the Democrats actually elected a Republican mayor. In 93, Rudy Giuliani promised to clean things up and actually did. By 2001, Rudy's last year in office, homicides had fallen from six murders a day to less than two murders a day. And Mike Bloomberg kept it in check. Until Lurch from the Adams family, the worst mayor in America, took over. Crime exploded while Bill slept in and got stoned. So we elected a former police officer as mayor, Eric Adams, who doesn't look like Big Bird, but sounds a lot like him. My administration will launch an unprecedented summer youth employment, youth and youth engagement program for summer 2022. As we know that gang violence and gun crimes spike in the summer months. The summer youth anti-violence employment effort. This has been an effort to ensure that young people who are at risk uh, get opportunities for summer youth employment, get steered in the right direction. Gun violence is a public health crisis, and it is one that must be addressed at every level of government. We must see immediate action from Congress on guns. We need the Congress to act on the issue of guns once and for all. We all see it with our <laughs> eyes. If there's one guy you don't want to plagiarize, it's Bill de Blasio. Speaking of which, President Joe Biden came to town today. This is a man who knows so little about law enforcement, he told police to shoot people in the leg. Instead of standing there and teaching a cop when there's an unarmed person coming at him with a knife or something to shoot him in the leg instead of in the heart. That's not exactly what we should be doing, Mr. President. My leg! Doyle! Are you okay? My leg! Stop it! Stop my leg! No! Biden didn't utter a single word today about dangerous Democrat DAs or dumb bail laws. He just promised to shovel cash down the city government's throat to prove he doesn't want to defund the police. We need more money for more money. I'm also calling for increased funding. The funding, we're about funding $300 million. A half a billion dollars. Of also, Biden said the Constitution doesn't let you own a cannon. This doesn't violate anybody's Second Amendment right. There's no violation of a Second Amendment right. We talk like there's no amendment that's absolute. When the amendment was passed, it didn't say anybody can own a gun and any kind of gun and any kind of weapon. You couldn't buy a cannon in when the, this, this uh, amendment was passed. Thank you, Joe. The NYPD could have a trillion dollar budget, but if the guys they bust keep walking out with no bail and no charges, then what's the point? And if you want to take guns off the street, take the guys that use the guns off the street. Biden should stop talking and do a little more listening. And here's who we should be listening to, us. Do you feel safe in New York City? 
Uh, not as much as I used to, I'm afraid. Less than in previous years. Um, pretty much. Do you feel safe in New York City? Uh, daytime, yes. Nighttime, it gets a little iffy. Half and half sometimes, depends on where I go. So what do you think about the recent crime wave we're seeing? I think it's awful. I think it's complete crap. I feel like it's definitely risen. It's been worse. Crime is up in almost every category, including shootings, murders, transit uh -huh. crimes up 65%. Does that concern you? No. Do you think the movement to defund the police was a good idea? No. Absolutely not. I, I think we need the police presence. Was defunding the police a good idea? No, not at all. What do you think of Manhattan's DA, Alvin Bragg? I don't know him. It's frustrating that, you know, people can literally assault you and an hour later they're right back on the street. Do you feel safe when you ride the subway, things like that? Uh, recently, no. I actually, I do something really weird. I, I don't go through the turnstile until I see the train coming. I don't even want to take the subway anymore, which sucks because the subway is the best way to get around in this city. I feel like I have to be extra aware of my surroundings at all times on the platform, on the train. Do you think that the mayor has a plan to reduce crime? I don't know. He's been in control of crime, so he should know what it's like to deal with it. But I think he's got to move a little bit faster. Joe Biden's coming to town. Why haven't we heard much from the president regarding crime? Uh, because he's got so much, so many other things on his plate. I don't know, to be honest, I, I guess you gotta ask Joe Biden. What specifically would you like to ask the president regarding crime? What are the short-term solutions and what are the long-term solutions? I don't think any president this day, no matter what party, uh, really cares about anything. People just gotta get over it. How connected is our media to the people of the country? Well, let's check in now with the ladies from The View. We need to get down to the root problem, which is the fact that Republicans are the ones that are defunding the police. Let's talk about what's real. Can, this can is I, a Republican problem. Can I throw she makes me miss Whoopi. We're going to start our little fact-checking operation here, the primetime fact-checker. It's the least we can do. Talking about um, the reduction of our NYPD budget and defunding a six billion dollar NYPD budget. Not only do we need to defund, but we need to dismantle and start anew. Yes, I support the defund movement because this is about the the um, investment in our communities, which have historically been divested. We have to reimagine public safety and how we do public safety in our country. I am for defunding the police. That last squad member, Cori Bush, just had her car shut up, and then she hired an armed private security detail. But that's life in America. And thanks to George Soros-funded DAs, you can stick up a convenience store for lunch and be sitting at your kitchen table for dinner. Biden won't call out Soros because he needs the money. The billionaire just cut a check for $125 million to fund Democrat midterm campaigns. Unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that. 125 mil into it. My goodness. So Democrats are sacrificing black lives for campaign cash. That's the bottom line. But the people are going to take back the streets, aren't we? I'll light the way like Geraldo, but I am not growing a mustache. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.